Hi everyone and welcome to the Virtue Cafe. I'm your host Shegilola Salami and this is the Shegilola Salami Show. Um, who have I got here with me today? Hi, this is Christina. I'm sorry, I should go by my pen name, KT Conti. Um, I've written my first debut album. I'm sorry, not album. Sorry, I've been I work in the music world as well too, so sometimes I mix up my book and album. But I've written my first book. It is called Awoke the Want series. It is a young adult paranormal fantasy um, featuring a black female as its main character, and it takes place in the city of Boston. As you probably can tell, I am American. And so I actually have quite a bit of actually international characters within this book. One of them actually being a very handsome Scottish man. So shout out to, to Scotland. <laughs> and um, yeah, no, I mean, this has been my baby for the last five years or so to push out this book. And so I was really excited to Tell the world about it. Hey, I wrote a book and I'm ready to bang out a couple of more. Fabulous. See, now before I figure out, you know, or before you tell me how you went from working in the music industry to publishing your own book, what would you like to have today? Oh, let's see. Well, I'm supposed to be on a diet right now. So <laughs> let's do a caramel latte, uh, skinny, no foam with skim milk. Uh, you're not demanding, are you? <laughs> no. Sorry. No. Sorry. You I, you know, when, whenever I get to work, you know, I live in New York City, so Starbucks are everywhere. So normally my very first inclination is to get a skinny caramel latte. So No foam. You have to remember that. Bit. No, foam. no foam. That's right. <laughs> Okay, that's fine. Well, you know what? I'm going to change this from Virtual Cafe to, let me see, Spaceship. You know, because you know, like, if you watch any fantasy sci-fi movies in, you know, in the spaceship, they just need to press the button, right? Press the button and your food just, it just comes out, right? So all the things you said, I'm just pressing the button and it's coming out. And all I can remember is skinny latte, caramel, no foam, right? The no foam sticks there. So I'm just going to press the button and it will just, you know, bring it. Um, and what would you like to drink? Uh, what would you like to eat with that? Oh, I'm I'm a sucker for sweets. So even though I'm going to diet, I think we'll have a little bit of a cheat, and we'll have a chocolate chip cookie. Chocolate chip. Okay, right. So whilst before I press the button, um, now tell me. So you said you were working in the music industry. How did you go from music to, you know, books? Or are you doing both at the same time? So it's really interesting. <laughs> um, you know, I started off, I'm, a, I'm still a lawyer by day and I am a writer by night. So during the day, Sorry, quick I've question. worked. Quick question, quick yeah. question. Lawyer but by day, writer by night. When do you put in music? So I actually work within the music industry. I actually worked in the, in the, in the entertainment world. So I've worked for indie artists i've worked for major corporations such as sony music and bad boy and now i'm kind of in this new area of healthcare and nonprofit. so my legal career is quite expansive but underneath it all has always been this desire just to be a writer you know uh -huh. so i have this two personalities I guess or dual personalities you know by day I'm like the prim proper you know uh, uh, attorney who's pretty badass and then on the, on the other hand I'm the badass author so overall badass just different ways of doing it just different ways of being badass that's good exactly exactly right so now it's, it's so this is your first book right so a work right, right. It's your, mm -hmm. it's your first book. So how did you, you know, what, you know, you, at the beginning you said it took you five years, you know, to get here. Like, so five years is a long time, you know. A, a child that was born five years ago, you know, that child, you know, <laughs> is proper, is a proper little madame, right? I mean, my little girl, she's probably right. three, and she is a proper little madame. So, you know, that's that's someone's lifetime, right? So tell me, how, how did you, you know, go ahead from, you know what, I think I want to write, I think I want to write, to, you know what, maybe I can actually do this. Maybe I should just get my, you know, Word document and just, like, how, how did you start off? 
So it's actually really funny because um, I was studying for the bar exam when I realized that I needed an escape. And I've been writing for years before when I was in high school and I kind of dabbled in, you know, short stories, poems. I wrote up my first like play when I was a senior in high school. And so I was really stressed out. And I said, I just need to escape into the little world inside my head. And so I started writing then. And within the first three months, I had the first draft of Awoke done. It was kind of one of those lightning bolt moments. And I had an idea. I was like, well, woman possessed. Like, I have to put this out in paper. Yeah. The first three months, you know, it was absolutely done. But (laughs) life got in the way. And, you know, I my career was changing about and I kind of had this love hate relationship with my book. At one point I loved it. Other points I hated it. The editing process is I think the hardest part of it, you know, because you, your own worst critic. And so I would tear apart my book all the time and in process of doing that. And I was, you know, deciding how do I want to go about, you know, publishing the book and, that was a whole another ordeal. And so then I moved to New York. I'm originally from Massachusetts. I moved to New York. Then I met my husband. I got married. Now we have a place with the dog. And finally, I said, you know what? Well, I should really just say I should give props to my husband. My husband was like, you know what? You've been talking about this book since I met you. It's time to put some money down. Put your money down. Let's do it. Let's get this done. So I hired an editor. Yeah. So at that point, I had gone through a number of different <laughs> drafts by that point. I think I was probably on draft five. I had an editor and I said, I want to make sure this is the best possible book I could put out. And so she and I, Brenda Pendergreen, we worked together on it for several months. Um, even then, I had issues with it because when I thought I was already there, when she came back to me with her first sub edits, I was like soul crushed. I was like, no, you're giving me so much more work to do. Are you serious? And um, it was an interesting process. But for the most part, we got through it. And I can honestly say I was able to finally, you know, when the mama bird has to push the little baby bird out of its nest to make sure it can fly on its own, I was able to finally do that. So that was my <coughs> five year cycle to make sure that it got done. Okay. But, you know, I had, I, had, I had cheerleaders along the way, and I think that's what people really need most is to make sure you do have somebody pushing you. You know, it's, it's like a workout. No one ever actually wants to work out, like, ever. But if you have somebody saying, hey, I'll do it with you, you're more likely to do it. Actually, that is incorrect, I think. Um, I mean, I do have some friends, you know, who are like beasts and you know, they're addicted to working out. So apart from those irregular human beings, right, who are addicted right. to working out, I found that your body talks to you. Um, I'm sorry, I'm digressive, right? But yeah, um, I find that your body talks to you. Um, and sometimes you just need to find that thing or that, you know, let me just say that thing because I'm not even sure what that thing is, right? But mm-hmm. you just need to find that thing which agrees with your body and then when your body is in tune with it and likes it or loves it your body will tell you you know when to do it um i never loved going to the gym um and then after i had my daughter you know i had this you know tremendous back pain and physio was like don't go out don't do anything don't carry your child don't do anything so you don't worsen your back pain um and eventually i found this youtube channel um, it's called Fitness Blender. Um, but the thing that I liked about them is that they had a lot of high intensity workouts, but they were quite good. Well, at least in a couple of the videos that I saw where they had low intensity alternatives. So, and it was like, you know, it was just you and yourself, right? And, you know, they had like five minute videos and you just do a five minute one because again, it's like you don't do anything and you just start off doing five minutes, right? And then right, right, by the time right. you do the five minutes, you're like, you know what? This five minutes has just felt like one minute. You know, I'm going to go for a 10 minute one. And then that 10 minute then feels like, you know, like one minute because you've enjoyed yourself. You know, it's low intensity. You're like, oh, this is just, you know, it's just that you're just moving your body. You're just doing stuff, but it's, you know, and then before you know, you're doing, you know, even longer ones, right? So, yeah, so sometimes I think you just need to find that thing that just agrees with you. And then, you know, you just sort of go, 
you know, go, you know, continue. But then I definitely do understand, you know, having to have, you know, someone on your team. Like, you know, my one, I don't even do my workout because my, my little girl, she just holds my leg, right? Because she seems to enjoy you. <laughs> that you know, when someone holds onto your leg and says you're not moving and you're trying to shake the person up, and she seems to absolutely love it. But yes, from a writing point of view, you know, I think that is quite, it's quite good to, you know, have a, you know, team. So how does your team motivate you? What do they do for you to motivate you? Well, for one thing, they have to give me my space. You know, my husband, as much as I love him and we're around together all the time, he knows that I have to have my quiet time to really be able to just delve into my work. And once I'm in my work, I'm, I'm in it. Like, I'm, you, I could lose myself in hours just, in that, just making sure that I make the time to do that, especially with, with my busy schedule. And, you know, just checking in from time to time. Like Brenda, for instance, you know, she hadn't heard from me for a little while. She's like, hey, Chris, you know, just want to make sure everything's okay. Let me know if you have any questions. If you have any issues, you know, just talk Who's to me. Brenda? And Brenda's my, my editor. Okay. And so um, she, you know, sometimes I would just call her just to tell her about what's going on in my life. And that could be possibly, you know, affecting my, my writer's block. And so she would kind of just walk me through it. So that's why I say it's really good to have your cheerleaders, your motivators behind you, because as that light happens, and sometimes that can affect how you're able to delve into your work. But if you have some sort of outlet to able to kind of separate yourself from all that is driving you crazy and delve yourself into all that makes you really happy, which, which really could be your writing and your characters and your stories, it's a great transition to do. And that can actually really help you with your writer's block and just getting it done. I think that's the biggest feat everyone's trying to do to get to is just to get it done. And sometimes you don't know when it's done, but you'll know when it's done. And, and I know that sounds really like cliche to say, but at one point you put that final period at the end, end of the last sentence, you're like, oh, I did it. I <laughs> No, that's 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 quite good. Uh, yeah, that's that's quite good. So when you were good and you so you get your space. See, for me, right, as a mom, I don't get space. Even my, I don't have toilet space. I don't have bedroom space. I don't have any space at all. The only time I have space is when the little human is finally deep asleep, right? So normally, when normal people right. sleep, that's when I'm doing my writing. Like literally, mm. I'm just that's typing true. like a crazy person, and that's probably why I like children's book because I can achieve a lot more in a shorter space of time. Than that's when I'm so writing. true. That's so true because yeah, so children's books are so much easier to write. I mean, at most, you're thinking like what, twenty-five pages, and that's probably less than five thousand words. They're so easy to write, you know. Um, and I, I've actually written one myself but that's kind of a secret. So that one's not will be coming out for a little while. But I mean, like, I totally understand that, you know, it's so much easier to do that, but it's, yeah, no, it can be a feat. Sometimes I have to like catch a quick 15 in between, like in the middle of my day. Like if something's like in the back of my head and that's been niggling me for a little bit, I'm like, I'll pull out my notebook, which I keep on me every single day and I'll just jot it down a little bit. Or during my lunch break, I might just, you know, do in a couple of sentences and then go about my day. So you, you kind of you have to get it, get it when you can, girl. Get it when you can, because it's hard. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think for me, you know, when I wrote, I mean, my first book, you know, was a bit of serendipity. Like, I didn't even plan to write it. It just fell mm -hmm. into my lap. So I'm not even going to talk about my first book, right? Um, but mm -hmm. I think what motivates me and what keeps me going is that I do have a number of friends that love me so much, right, that I can never do anything wrong. And they always struck my ego and told me <laughs> what an amazing person I am. Right? the best. So when I've written, you know, the first draft of any of my books, I'll go and give it to my friends. And at the moment, I'm almost reluctant to give them anything because I know exactly what they're going to say. They're going to go, oh, my God, this is so amazing. And it's so <laughs> nice. And it's so good. How did you do it? And it's like, I just... <laughs> I mean, seriously, who doesn't like praise, right? Seriously. I know. It's the greatest. I mean, it's great to have those people in your corner. It really is. 
<laughs> so that's what keeps me going because you know I'm like I read I do all this thing and then I go and then they stroke my ego so much. <laughs> And I'm like, okay, fine. They don't think it's complete crap. They don't think it's complete rubbish. Then I go and give it to the people who I know are going to give me. They're going to just rip that band-aid out. Band-aid, we don't say, they're going to just take the plaster out and just going to just rip it and just give me the, you know, the proper feedback that I don't deserve. And then you're going to be like, okay, fine. I can actually see where I can improve. Um, I can see, you know, where, because I, you know, sometimes I find that, you know, all my thoughts and everything, they're like spaghetti in my brain. And sometimes Mm -hmm. I need a bit of a cattle prod to just straighten it out properly right right exactly. you know my friends you know they strip my ego make me feel better that i've done an amazing thing then i get the real people who get that cattle prod and prod me to say well you need to do this better um and then you know then you know sort of that just sort of that keeps me going so I, you know, Definitely. I get the people to make me feel better. I get the people to give me a bit of electric shock. Then I get people who make me feel better. Then a little bit more of electric shock. And that's, right. that's, that's what keeps me going. It's true. I mean, like, you know, the, the team over at Sugar King Publishing, the, our, my, my publisher, you know, they have a great editorial team that's really good for that. Um, you know, when, when initially when the book was, you know, in its final stages of it being pushed out, you know, the everything went through the editorial team. It was, it was good raw feedback that I guess I needed really to hear because even at one point you think, okay, I've done, I feel like I've done every single possible thing. It might be one little thing like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. And so you don't always want a lot of yes men or women beside you because yeah. that doesn't, you know, get you to where you need to be. It doesn't hurt to have one or two, but they can't outrank all of them. Of course. Right. Of course. So what have you learned to do from, you know, from publishing your first book? What have I learned to do? Oh, to man. Do? Uh, uh, I've learned uh, the, uh, the intricacies of publishing. I, you know, it was a crash course in um, knowing what exactly had to get done you know the pushing it to actual booksellers getting in contact with people talking to more industry people then I really thought about the business of I guess publishing I never had really thought about it before I was only focusing on just the writing aspect but but the business of actually being an author is a whole nother beast in and of itself and I and in no way shape or form do I feel like I know everything but for the past couple of months, I really feel as if I've had a crash course in all the ins and outs, who to know, who what to know, how to get across to people, marketing, social media, um, you know, different campaigns, giveaways, you know, I could go on and on. But, you know, there's, there's a whole other aspect to the business of an author. And I think sometimes authors do forget that, that, you know, they want to be an author, but there is the creative side and also the business aspect of it that they need to be aware of. So I'm learning. Okay, now that, that sounds good. So um, <clears throat> how do you feel, you know, um, you know when you, when I'm, I'm assuming, and I, I guess I shouldn't assume, so I should just start, are you going to write another book? Oh, yes. So uh, Awoke is the first of three. Um, I'm actually in the process of getting ready to write the second one right now. And um, even after that, I have another whole entire series that I've already planned out to be coming out right after the want series is over. So right now I have about five different books in my head, plus a couple of side projects. So uh, the, the, the goal, the ultimate goal is to completely trans, you know, come out of law and to be a full-time author. Okay, okay. And how do you, or what do you think you would do to make that happen other than writing? So one of the lessons that I have learned um, about writing in of itself and of the business is that it's not necessarily just one piece, it's really it's about how many pieces you have in the marketplace. So I, I'm right now trying to make sure that I have enough set into the marketplace that could possibly, you know, um, 
help me live and give me enough income to permit me to survive as being solely an author. Now, to say that I may completely divorce, you know, divorce myself from law might be a long shot just because I am first and foremost a lawyer, so I can't help myself. Uh, I might, you know, because of my contacts within the industry, like I know people are going to ask me to do certain things here and there, and, I, and I'll probably still delve into it, but I'm hoping to make it less 85 lawyer, 15% author, and do it on the flip side, 85 author, 15% lawyer. That makes sense. Okay, okay. Can I be cheeky? And, you know, people don't like asking about money, but how are your book sales doing? So we actually don't know yet. So for the most part, because it was only released October 1st, I actually don't know how well it's done yet. All the reports only happen at the end of the month. So I'm hoping it's doing well. Um, we've had um, some virtual tours happening for the book and the reviews have been fairly good. Um, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed, you know, but I'm in it for the long haul, regardless of how good or how, how bad it may be. Um, I'm, I'm in it to win it. Okay. So who's in your marketing team? What are they doing for you? So I actually, I have a really great friend who, um, who joined in on the marketing team and she is actually, that's all that she does is um, PR and publicity and marketing. So what she's been doing is, I don't know, well, I don't know how much, but for the UK markets, but I know at least for the US markets, um, she's been trying to do these interviews for me. She's been trying to um, get me some more in-person events, definitely in the New York City area, um, placing it into bookstores, um, getting me just to be in contact with people. Um, as a matter of fact, actually, we have a number of events that we're going to. So we have one in South Carolina that we're going to, which is called the, um, the Young Adult uh, Fest or the Y'all Fest in South Carolina. Um, We'll be doing a couple of different appearances here in New York City. And I know she has a bunch of promotions that's going to be happening toward the um, Black Friday season, early holiday season. So it's, it's, a, it's a very different things. And I know that she's been telling me, you know, we have to figure out in terms of what's the best way to go by, especially with the times of things. And so, I don't know. I, I leave a lot of that to her and I kind of defer it to her to kind of, let me know where I need to be and what needs to happen. Okay. No, I just, I just feel like, you know, sometimes, you know, the way, you know, when you feel that your book, you know, your promotion's going on and you see all these things going up, that kind of like just gives you a bit of a lack of a better word. It sort of hypes you to want to do more. Um, it does. So, yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. So how are you going to motivate yourself to write your next book and keep up with it? Well, just from the reactions that I've gotten from people um, online and offline about how they enjoyed the book, and actually that in and of itself has really motivated me. And I actually, I'm going to align myself to write the first draft in a month for National Writing, National Novel Writing Month, which is, which is November. So yeah. my goal is to get that done in the first month or so. So... I actually feel pretty motivated. The fact that I've been planning this out for a little while and I'm ready to really kind of hit the ground running with it is, is great. And plus, again, you know, when, when you see people coming to you and telling you how much they enjoy the book, it, it really is like a job of I, adrenaline, you know? I know. It's amazing. It's an amazing feeling, right? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Especially because, you know, you've been sitting on it and you're not really sure because you felt so insecure about it and to finally have that the, the accolades come to you you're like oh wow that's that's amazing that's absolutely amazing i know i know okay well i'm gonna have to kick you out very soon um, oh no <laughs> <laughs> well you have been here a while so i do need i do need to shut up short you know very soon but you know before okay. i kick you out you know do you have any words of wisdom for any authors you know, who've been thinking about writing but haven't actually found the motivation to actually do something about it? So the one thing that I would say, it's actually funny because I guess you get this question a lot. Um, the one thing I would say is don't think about it so much. Just do it. And the reason why I say this is because we get into our heads and because we are such imaginative people, we think of 
the absolutely worst that could possibly happen. Don't be your worst enemy. Be your best friend in that regard. Think of what the possible best could possibly happen and just ride that into it. And don't think about whether it's good or not. That's what the editing process is for. Just start it. Just absolutely just start it. Write to pen to paper. Don't worry about whether it fully makes sense now. Don't worry about whether that word choice is good or not. Just get it pen to paper and just write it. In the moment, at least you can definitely say you have the meat of your book done. You can then start melding it together. But again, don't get too much into your head. Just try it. Just try it. No, that, that sounds amazing. Um, okay, so when you start writing the next book in your series, when is that going to be out? Oh, um, so the exact date, I don't want to say yet because my editorial team will probably yell at me to say that. Um, but more than likely, um, maybe latter half Correct. of 2018. Around yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe the latter half of 2018. Okay. Maybe. Okay. So a bit of yeah. a while to go. Yes. Yes. Okay, no, that's fine. So if anyone wants to connect with you, find out more about you, see what you're up to, how can they do so? Oh, they can go to my website, ktconte, C-O-N-T-E dot com. You can also go to um, my publisher's website, sugarcane pub, no, sorry, sugarcane books dot com. Um, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, you can just kind of look me up on that smiling darling face that just wants to meet you and greet you and have a conversation with you so feel free also to reach me out if you ever need a cheerleader i've spoken a lot about cheerleaders if you need someone to help you motivate you to get to where you need to be feel free and i will motivate the hell out of you fabulous i, I definitely need more people to stroke my ego and tell me <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be real with you, though. I'm gonna be real with you, okay? I'm not gonna be a fool, yes, man. I'll be like, <laughs> yes, but how about this? That's what I'm gonna Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. Well, we can, we can work with that as well. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, but well, it's been a pleasure, and hopefully, we'll see you again sometime um, soon on the show. Oh, no, definitely. Definitely. I'll definitely be coming back. All right, then. Well, until next time, you just take care of yourself now. You too. Okay, bye. Bye, everyone, and thanks for staying in. I'm turning. I'll speak now. Thanks for tuning in again today on the Shagilala Salami Show. So until next week, it's bye for now.